Hello, I'm Stephen Atwood. I'm a professor from Durham University with a particular interest in eosinophilic esophagitis. Eosinophils are a type of white blood cell that occur in reaction to allergy. The cause of EOE, we believe, is a reaction to certain types of food. And in many patients, it's a reaction to a number of different types of foods. It is regarded as an antigen reaction that's just affecting the lining of the esophagus. So it's not an allergy that affects the body. It doesn't affect other parts of the gastrointestinal tract. And it's a focal reaction to a foodstuff. Commonest foodstuffs are milk and wheat, but sometimes other foods such as fish, soya, um, rice and other foods, vegetables like peas and beans. These are all potential causes of uh, the condition. Uh, there's also the possibility that environmental uh, inhaled aero antigens can be at fault, such as pollens or other kind of uh, allergens like that that can irritate the lining of the esophagus. The main symptom of AOE is that food is uh, slow to pass through the esophagus after swallowing. So the food can feel stuck or just move slowly with discomfort. Uh, sometimes the food gets completely stuck and in that circumstance patients can be quite uncomfortable, get distressed trying to retch to relieve themselves and also swallowed saliva then bounces back and regurgitates as fluid. And sometimes the stuck food remains stuck for many hours and the patients need to present to a hospital a &E department with a food bolus obstruction and that requires endoscopic removal. And so the important issue for GPs is to understand the difference between the symptoms of heartburn and regurgitation in acid reflux and the symptom of food discomfort on swallowing or dysphagia in eosinophilic esophagitis. In reflux, the symptoms of uh, discomfort occur after a meal, uh, sometimes at night and sometimes when people are stooping, whereas in eosinophilic esophagitis, the symptom occurs during a meal and the feeling of discomfort is immediately after they swallow. And the regurgitation in reflux is different in that it'll occur again well after a meal or when stooping and it'll come up as a bad taste, whereas with EOE, the regurgitation is of swallowed saliva that's got stuck and is simply bouncing back up and is usually tasteless and not acidic. The commonest reason for delayed diagnosis is the partial response to proton pump inhibitors. So a patient will have presented to the doctor with a symptom of discomfort after meals that's interpreted as uh, indigestion or heartburn. And then the GP will have prescribed a proton pump inhibitor and in the majority of those patients, the symptoms will persist to some degree. And it may take some time before the GP understands that it is not reflux and it might be something else. The second pitfall in diagnosis is that the person doing the endoscopy can miss the condition. They need to know that uh, for everybody having an endoscopy for dysphagia, that biopsies should be taken. A third problem in terms of pitfalls is that the pathologist may feel that they don't need to count the eosinophils. The main treatments are a diet to avoid the cause of the inflammation, drugs that can suppress the inflammation and dilatation to stretch a very stiff esophagus. Uh, diets are uh, difficult to follow because multiple foods need to be avoided. So very few patients actually can achieve that. The multiple food restrictions work in very well motivated patients only in about 70% and then even those in which they work most patients can't sustain it for more than a year. So the alternative drug treatments are important for everybody to consider and they're either topical steroids which suppresses all the inflammation in the wall of the esophagus or proton pump inhibitors which suppresses the eosinophil aggregation into the esophagus. And then the third treatment which is really used when the other treatments are not effective and that's an endoscopic dilatation or stretch therapy down an endoscope. 